This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. Welcome to Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm your host, Tim Apicella. Since October 2016, when this show first aired, we focused on issues that we hoped were important to you, transportation and traffic issues, and at times identified solutions. We have covered topics ranging from the bus to the future of bus services, the pro and cons of Honolulu Rail Project, admittedly more focus on the con than the pro, vanpool services, carpool strategies, and carpool lanes. We looked at employer transportation benefit programs, biking in Honolulu and Biki in Waikiki, and the fare structure complaints in between. We looked at ferry proposals from Sand Island to the Naval Shipyard, scenic air gondolas to U of H, hydrogen fuel cells in our cars, and even the topic of road rage and how to avoid it. 31 shows in all dedicated to trying to lay out Honolulu's traffic puzzle, one piece at a time. One topic we seem to skip over, but not intentionally, is pedestrian safety. Unfortunately, we seem to hear about pedestrian issues only when the news reports about pedestrian fatalities. We rarely hear about the positive work going on behind the scenes by dedicated transit employees attempting to make our streets and crosswalks safer for our children, our seniors, and for you and me. With me today are our guests, Mark Kikuchi, Division Chief, and Dana Teramoto, Traffic Education Specialist for the Honolulu Department of Transportation Services to discuss their outreach and their education to the public and efforts to keep us safe from increasing traffic and the distracted driver. Mark, Dana, thank you so much for joining us. I uh, appreciate your time uh, taking away from important work uh, to come here to our studios. Um, so how long have you been working in education about pedestrian safety, Dana? Uh, well, for myself, Tim, I've been working for DTS about 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we educate, try to educate the seniors. I have senior pre um, pedestrian safety presentations. I also have like um, ped man, pedestrian man presentations for the elementary school age children. Okay, Mark, how long have you been with wow. DTS? Glad to be here, Tim, but uh, I've been with the department about 27 years, most of it as a traffic engineer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think, see things change over the last 27 years? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> quite a bit? Yeah, quite a bit, um, especially in the area of traffic calming. Uh -huh. um, as you know, speeding is one of our main problems uh, on our roads, and um, traffic calming has come from uh, its infancy to where it is now, where people actually request traffic calming devices like roundabouts. So, you know, when we first started, everybody was against it, so, you know, it's kind of a new thing. Um, but now, it seems to be kind of mainstream. Traffic calming also increases or helps pedestrian sure. usage and, sure. and right away? Yes. Yeah. So. Okay, well, let's talk about what you guys actually do, uh, you know, day in and day out, and that is educate and outreach. So, Dana, without further ado, tell me, kind of describe your day and how you do it. Hmm. Okay, Tim. Um, usually busy, a lot, lot of emails, as you know, right? We always get always you know, get emails. Yeah. So, like for instance, especially when you work in government. I'm sorry, but no, <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Yeah. So, like today, for instance, I got an email from um, one of our, um, uh, I guess. Um, partners so they're gonna have kids fest that's gonna be in October 29 so that's a really big fair at the Bishop Museum so that's one big thing that you know mm -hmm. we're, that's coming up and then um, also I want to mention that you know besides my pedestrian safety education uh, we also do safe routes to school so you know we try to encourage people to bike or walk to school oh, you do? Okay. yeah and then you know if people want to apply you know for you know we have um, $3,500 um, you know, applications that we can, you know, we give out money if they want to oh. do educational outreach for their schools. For communities or we, um, certain organizations or? We prefer to be like um, at least the school, right, Mark? School right. sponsors, yeah, right. it, you know, but maybe a, maybe a champion from maybe the PTSA can. Right, generally, that, generally you know? um, uh, the way the rules work is um, um, the staff members at the school probably don't have enough time. So what happens is, um, a, a parent or uh, anybody could actually champion a project. Let's say um, for uh, if they see a need for um, concrete sidewalks to the school so the kids can walk you know, safely versus uh, dirt and rocks and things. Um, but they would need to do a number of things to um, 
kind of get that grant money. And um, that's why generally the principal and the teachers don't have the time to right. do it. Right, they so have nothing going on. They have nothing yeah. going on. So because the uh, surveys need to be done um, to, I guess, see how many students are actually walking to school, if it will be a benefit for um, concrete sidewalks to be placed. Now, if, for example, the um, survey finds that not too many students walk to school, and a lot of schools you know, today are in a geographical exception where um, the students don't live in the district, so the parents drop them off oh, on their way to work, so they don't, they, they don't have a chance to walk. So um, it has to be some kind of a benefit before we actually proceed with the grant. So, sure. and, and, and survey is one way of um, doing it. And the, and the parents would actually survey to see if, let's say, if, if they'll, they'll, they'll pose the survey in such a way that if concrete sidewalks were put in, would you allow your kids to walk to, walk to school? Well, that's going to my next question. Right. And that is, what percentage do you think of children that walk to school versus their parents dropping them off? Just, and you know, I, I know that's a tough statistic hmm. to come up with at the top of your head, but what would you guess is? Um, in one school in Pro, Pro, Pro City, there was 50% uh, um, were driving, and a small percentage were biking, and the rest were walking. So I would say, uh, in that case, and it varies from school mm -hmm. to school, I would say about 30, maybe 30? 30%. Okay, so that's a lot of kids on the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you say safe routes, earlier you mentioned the term safe routes. Mm -hmm. Is that to pre-identify a safe route to the school from home, or is that, um, did I get that wrong as far as the misnomer? Yeah, that's, that's from home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Back and forth from home, yeah. All right. Well, through all these years of education, and it's hard to measure these things, I know that. Education and your outreach to communities, schools, children, adults, you, you do outreach to adults, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Seniors, too, by the way? You go to senior? Um, yeah, so I go to, like, mm -hmm. um, you know, like a lot of the parks and rec, they have senior groups, so right. I go to there. I give them, a, like, a 30-minute PowerPoint presentation, like, you know, like stuff like the jaywalking fine what they should be wearing so they're more visible, right. you know, when they're going out and about daytime or even nighttime walking, you know, they, they should wear reflective clothing at night. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, so with all these different groups, how do you measure the impact of your outreach? That's pretty tough to do, I would imagine, but is there any kind of indicators that you guys follow or track to see if you're on the mark, off the mark? Hmm. Well, I know for an instance this year, mm -hmm. there was only one pedestrian fatality, so. Okay, so unfortunately yeah, you're saying maybe fatalities is your barometer well, yeah, or a metric. Yeah. A metric yeah. of sorts, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's hard to figure out how, how effective we are. It is. And, mm -hmm. I, and, and one way we and maybe do Maybe it's it, an unfair question for me to ask, so well, no, sorry. Not really. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, I think one way to do it is look at our um, fatality of fatal statistics. Right. And, if, and, in, and as she mentioned, this year we're like at one and previously you have, you have the stats for that? Previously? Yeah, so I think the other year there was like 20 fatalities. At this right. point yeah. in time. Right, right. No, but I was no, looking 15, at some yeah, of those, those numbers, and unfortunately it looks like seniors is the highest um, group of, yeah. of pedestrians that um, unfortunately are being affected at, adversely by, you know, cars and things. Yeah, we still have a lot to do. I mean, the, the numbers still look good for the, you know, front half of this year. And traditionally, um, if we looked at previous years, um, the... Most of, it, for example, if 20 pedestrian accidents happen, or crash, uh, fatals, I'm sorry, fatals happened in a given year, mm -hmm. three quarters of the um, fatalities happened in the first six months, and for some reason, and, and we find that to be, I, I don't know, we don't for know why. months? Yeah, we don't know why. We don't know why, because our, you know, our climate is pretty consistent all the way through. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. wondering mm -hmm. if, if there was a certain time of the year where you see an increase in it pedestrian just, it, incidents or not? Or? Yeah, it just varies. Yeah. But we do notice that like from 6 a.m., like 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. is when a lot of them are getting, you know, hit. I so see. it's more than 50% usually. So here's the tough question. And, you know, uh, I know there's some bills out there, you know, not only here in Honolulu, but also in the Seattle area, Washington State, um, that are trying to address distra distracted drivers, but in this mm -hmm. case also distracted pedestrians. Mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned the crosswalk law. Could you describe that for our audience? Because I'm not sure a lot of folks know exactly what what the penalty is if you jaywalk and, and things of that nature. Oh, okay. But so what I usually tell the seniors is that um, 
even when it's um, counting down, you're not supposed to cross. That's mm -hmm. also like a jaywalk. You can step off the curb onto the yeah. crosswalk. Yeah, so if you're already in there, when it's green and then it starts to count down, then you can finish crossing. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it'll be a jaywalking fine, so that'll be a $130 fine. $130? Yes. Okay. All right, everyone, you, did you hear that, $130? Because <laughs> that's a lot of money to step off at the wrong time. Now, yeah. there is some, I'm sure you've heard some criticism that um, the time allotted from the time, you know, it says it's okay to walk to with the flashing uh, orange hand. There's not a lot of time sometimes for that. Well, I do know that um, when I talk to one of the engineers, mm -hmm. they go by the manual of uniform traffic, yeah? Yes. Control devices, so I guess it's in that mandate. And how probably within how the many, standard. Yeah, what, 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 uh, yeah standard. what it was, was uh, previously on the old standard, it was about um, 3.5 feet per second was what the average person would walk. Mm -hmm. So, um, based upon, um, I guess, um, changing trends or maybe more elderly in our population, right. we went to three, three feet. You brought it down. We brought it down. Yeah. So, to allow more time for the pedestrian to cross. I'd uh, mm -hmm. just like to add that um, a lot of people are under the misconception that um, you can't cross on the flashing flash in the ped flashing light right. but once you're started you can finish to continue to cross yeah right. and we have those countdown things too and that's it's just that's stepping off the curb right to the street Un yes right. Yeah, right when that um, white walking symbol is up you can start to cross right but once you're in the crosswalk you can continue until you finish even though the um, flashing signal is on mm -hmm. okay well since we're on the topic of pedestrian crossing the street and mm -hmm. what are the main hazards do you have you identified and tried to address for pedestrians uh, you mentioned uh, sometimes uh, early in the morning and mm -hmm. wearing bright mm -hmm. clothing but are there other kind of hazards that are out there that you know are obvious or, or perhaps not obvious well like for instance I mean I'm sure we've been guilty of it holding the cell phone right you know looking texting right being mm -hmm. on the cell phone because I see people at the, the light waiting for it to change, but they're texting. So right. when the light changes to the crossing, they're still looking Are at they their... they're still looking? Yes, I've seen that many and times. And then when they finally realize it's, you know, it's time for them to cross, it's now flashing. Yeah, it's don't flashing cross. already. I just find that so Oh, interesting. Funny. Okay. Yeah. Well, now that Bill 6 has been passed and it won't take effect, I think, until October the 26th, right. um, they'll have that to contend with um, mm -hmm. for not looking at it at all. Um, have you heard any comments from your department yeah. about Bill 6? Well, Bill 6? Well, but I just have a comment mm -hmm. about um, hazards that maybe pedestrians okay. face. I think, I think um, to truly uh, get our numbers down, and, 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 and our goal is probably zero fatalities for the year, um, we, we try to encourage um, pedestrians to be visible because um, on a lot of the um, traffic accident reports, um, when the uh, car impacts the pedestrian, the reason was, I didn't see them. Didn't see them. I didn't see them. Mm -hmm. Now, um, and we've noticed that, like she said, it's from 6, um, 6 p.m. PM to, to 6 a.m. So generally, okay. dusk to dawn. Mm -hmm. and, and so if pedestrians could realize that and wear bright clothes. You know, when we went to school, we were always told to wear bright clothing, walk on the side facing traffic right. to make yourself visible to the, to the uh, motorists. And I think that will go a long way in helping bring our numbers down. I mean, we're happy with our numbers now, but I think we have a ways to go yet. I have noticed, and I've only been in Honolulu for 10 years, but I have noticed that a lot of pedestrians and bicyclists, unfortunately, either they don't have any lights on the bikes, yes. and they're wearing dark clothing rather than anything that's, yeah. you know, reflective. And, but I've also noticed that pedestrians do the kind of the same thing. They work, they're wearing darker clothing, and I'm not just sure why that is. Yeah. Another thing I, I, we, we've noticed that pedestrians do that they sometimes think that the crosswalk is some kind of an invisible wall, and and, I, I mean, and you've seen it. They just, I have. You know, they just will step out into the road, and you know, when in her senior classes, she tried to emphasize to them to try to be aware and look at before you cross. You know, yes, you have the signal, yes, you have the crosswalk, but to be aware of the cars, you know, and because car is a little bigger. I, than I've it. seen a great mm -hmm. amount of mm -hmm. trust from pedestrians right, right. To, when they when they venture across and they are completely oblivious to yes. the possibility of a distracted driver. So right. it, it is amazing that, that um, pedestrians seem to have a great, and I don't know if it's trust or courage or both, but <laughs> no, you're right, Tim. or there's another adjective well, I don't want to uh, use. I, yes. <laughs> and I we won't use that, but there is another adjective that could be used. 
Um, I see you have some paraphernalia. Yes, yes. But I, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break. Okay. And then sure. when we come back from the break, I'd love to see what you brought with us. Sure. Yeah. Okay. This is Tim Apicella, and we're talking about pedestrian safety and moving Hawaii forward. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I'm going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today cause I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way cause it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. Doug Rawlson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything you, to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air crystals, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, engineering, legislation, with the local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones that might affect you. Hi, welcome back to Moving Hawaii Forward. This afternoon we're talking about pedestrian safety and before the commercial break we were just talking about um, pedestrians going through the crosswalk with an unbelievable amount of trust and confidence mm -hmm. and not necessarily looking at the cars that are would be coming into the intersection or you know maybe they're supposed to stay out of the intersection but they're coming through and um, and we talk about some of the things that you uh, you do your outreach with and oh some, yeah so some Tim, aids here. so when I do the senior um, pedestrian safety presentations um, I give all seniors a bag along with this blinker mm -hmm. so the blinker is really good I tell them that they should wear this at night or even like even when you go shopping in the parking lot you know, when cars are reversing. You know, Do they wear it on the sides, front, um, back? Where would they put it? Clip it on the front yeah. or on their bag. Mm -hmm. But if they're going to walk at night, I would suggest putting mm -hmm. it on the back. Like, mm -hmm. for example, I, I go jogging sometimes. It's dark when I go. So I have a visor. I put it on the back of my visor so that cars turning behind me can see me. So this is good. And then, you know, we give these to the kids. These are reflective stickers when we go to our fairs. And then when we, we also get invited to the Hawaii Pet Expo, so these are actually reflective um, collars, you know, leashes. Oh, for your wrist? For, no, for your dog. Oh, you know, the dog, oh, you know, for sorry. the leash. Yeah, you know, for the leash, you put the leash oh, okay. through here, and so it, it reflects, That's so it's great. very visible. Because, you know, we forget our furry friends, right? Right. That they have to be safe. So, Mark, during the commercial break, you had mentioned as, as kids, you were taught when you cross, right. look out for cars. Look both ways. And both ways, right? right? right. What's, what's going on? <laughs> That doesn't seem to be happening anymore. I, I, I don't know. You know, um, maybe with the advent of all these distractions, cell phones and stuff, it's just the, the way that um, people are living now, you know. Um, right, Mark. And there's also more, more cars. Yeah. Roads are getting wider. Mm -hmm. I mean, not wider, but it, there's more traffic on the roads. Um, see, you know, I... I well, nationally, you know, the, the statistics for biking accidents and pedestrian accidents, which also includes fatalities, is a direct correlation to those drivers that are using the cell phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the statistics are pretty pretty straightforward on that. Mm -hmm. um, our island, our city, has a pretty severe cell phone law. Yes. Um, I don't remember what the dollar amount is if you're caught on your cell phone while you're driving. I don't. Um, but it's fairly, fairly substantial. Um, I wasn't going to mention this until later, but Washington State just passed their distracted driver distracted law, and it is very severe, and that is no cell phone at all, no um, no speaking, uh, to include no smoking in the car with or without children, no mm -hmm. drinking, no eating, nothing that can distract you is permitted under this new oh, law. So not even the Google Maps then? Not even the Google, unless oh. it's built into the, um, into the, the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And even then, there's a debate whether or not, you know, inputting your, your address in itself is a distraction when mm -hmm. you're driving. So um, it's pretty severe, and I'm wondering if other cities are going to follow suit. If you've heard any discussions where Honolulu might be in a position to toughen their uh, driver distraction laws or not, um, 
Well, you know, because right now when the law was passed, cell phones were used, you know, primarily for communicating. But mm -hmm. you know, the technology, of course, has advanced, and it hasn't taken a whole lot of years. And now they're used for everything from Google Maps, uh, wayfinders, and and things of that nature. So um, I'm wondering if if somehow the law that was initially passed hasn't caught up with technology. Well, I, well, I think that um, we're going to let. Uh, I think a way to proceed is we, we let the law go and, and then we take statistics um, or we take um, data and, and if we find that the self is not working maybe we need, there's a need to get tougher and we can we can propose legislation or you know council members could do it um, but at this point I think I think we were willing to take a wait and see attitude right. uh, let's see let's see how it affects the new law affects our, our um, statistics or data and if it's not if it's working, maybe it's enough. I mean, if it's not, then maybe we should make it tougher. Well, that leads me to kind of the topic of, of, of Bill 6, and that is the pedestrian law that is recently passed and again will be implemented in October, and that is the, the uh, prohibition of people looking at their cell phone just when they cross the street. Is that correct? It's not any other yes. time before mm -hmm. that. Yes. Um, I, I'm wondering if that, if that was based on trying to make the pedestrian safer <laughs> or I'm just curious why that law didn't address more of the driver um, versus the pedestrian I mean I, the pedestrian needs to be aware of what's going on and mm -hmm. I agree with that so from that standpoint I, I agree with that portion of the law but it just seems that um, we're in a position to really look at the distracted di driver not only from a safety standpoint but also from a traffic um, um, we're, we're being stalled in traffic and every time you have a delay um, we're making our congestion worse. So if everyone's on their cell phone while at a stoplight, mm -hmm. there's that, you know, minute second mm -hmm. is taking them to realize the light is green and cars in front of them are starting to move, and they have a, sl a delayed reaction. The car behind that has a delayed reaction. Mm -hmm. And so, we're, you know, we're seeing more traffic congestion because people are still using their yeah. cell phones, mm -hmm. even at lights. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that has come up you know, as statistical data that you've seen and come across your desk or not, or? Not yet. We, we, we go to conferences and to see what's happening nationally, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in the area of pedestrian safety or distracted driving, and it, so far it hasn't come up yet. Um, we're, we're going to one this year, and it might show up, but right now it's just cell phones, reading the paper, lips, makeup, and, mm -hmm. and that kind of things, um, and kids in the car, you know. Yeah. I was my kid, I was, you know, <laughs> disciplining my kids in the car while driving, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, so far, but we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. just curious if that is have come if up it's because nationally, yeah. if that is also creating delay in traffic just because people mm. cannot seem to put down their cell phones. And, you know, I'll come sit here right now and I'll look at the camera and say, I'm guilty of having the cell phone in my hands waiting at a light. Mm. I don't try not to do that anymore. Um, I've learned that that's not good mm -hmm. for, for a variety of reasons. If not financially, it's just... It's just right. inconsiderate. Um, I did a program here not long ago about road rage, and the number one complaint or, or spark to road rage is when people see other people with cell phones uh -huh. not paying attention. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that's, that's quite a, um, a change in yeah. what caused road rage um, in the past. So describe what you guys have done um, in the past. Now tell me, there's, there's a program called Safe Streets. Or Safe After School. Well, there's, I, I'm not oh, aware yeah. of that one, but okay. there's also something called Safe Streets, is where it's trying to create a buffer zone for oh. bicyclists and pedestrians, Complete. I thought. Um, um, I, safe Streets, but, well, I know that we just put in the King Street um, um, protected bikeway. Right. And even though that's for bicyclists, it has a, a effect of helping pedestrians. Well, that's what I was tr uh, trying to get at, mm, if, that, if right. that was kind of a dual purpose. It's a dual purpose. We found that mm -hmm. out to be true. The, uh, previously, our data showed that 75% um, of the bicyclists that went down King Street was using the sidewalk and, com and dodging pedestrians and conflicting pedestrians. Um, after that uh, protected bike lane went in, we found that that percentage dropped to 4%. Four, it varies from 4 to 2% of uh, bicyclists on the sidewalk. Most of them are using the protected bike lane whereby keeping off the sidewalk, keeping the pedestrian safe, safer, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and there's also that buffer zone. It's right now, it's about 13 feet from the pedestrian to the nearest car. Right. So that's the safety zone. That's the safety zone, another right. safety zone. So it has a dual effect. Does the city have plans to increase, increase uh, the safe zones? 
Sure. Uh, we have um, plans for more protected bike lanes like that. Mm -hmm. The latest one is on South Street. Right. And we're looking at, right now, Pekoi Street and possibly Keomoku Street um, to, to get a kind of a network, to kind of make a connection to help bicycl bicyclists get where they're going instead of like an orphaned bike path where you ride in and get nowhere. It's so yeah. Right. If you have a network, you can kind of use it to get to work. And the King Street Bikeway, we've, we've noticed a big increase in the usage. And, you know, when talking to people, they say they use it to go to work now and they feel much com more comfortable that they're separated from the traffic. And, um, and pedestrians are happy, happy well, they're to... Getting to, used to it. Yeah, getting they're used getting used to it. Used to it. Yeah, sure. You know, the only problem is, <coughs> excuse me, is um, when tourists are on the road and they're not familiar with these kind of you know, safe zones, and they're not sure how the biking lanes work. Right. Particularly if you take a left on King Street, I think, and, you know, bicyclists are coming from uh, both directions, yeah. and, you know, they, they fail to look to their left-hand side when they're making a left turn. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, tourists. Well, we're a yeah. resort destination. <coughs> and with the advent of the Beaky bike share thing, um, I guess a lot of them don't know the the rules. You can't ride on sidewalks, for example. Right. So, you know, we've asked Beaky to kind of educate them either by pamphlets or maybe some kind of signing on their stations to kind of help them, I guess, know that it's not really yeah. cool to ride on the uh, sidewalks. Well, we know that tourists are multilingual. All, all the languages in the world yes. are found on our streets of Waikiki yeah. and uh, in downtown. Yeah. So maybe more visual uh, wayfinding or more visual yeah. do not ride <laughs> on the sidewalk mm -hmm. signs are in order. Dana, act yeah, Dana actually, uh, Produced a bike pamphlet in different languages. I think as Not part of bike, huh? oh, the, about the English walkwise. No, walkwise. walkwise. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, walkwise. So that was under walkwise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I want to commend you both for for your outreach and your activities because we just can't do enough to protect our pedestrians, particularly mm -hmm. our children, our seniors, and um, so all the things you do and have done um, are very much appreciated. And I would like to thank you both for coming onto my show. Oh. And um, thank you for taking the time out. No, so. oh, thank you. This for is Moving Hawaii Forward. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. And aloha.